when talking about the economy in the United States. I guess I should welcome you back to session two. Uh, now we're going to talk about policies for actually controlling the economy that the government puts into place. When talking about economic indicators and looking at the state of a national economy, um, the United States has typically based uh, their principle on the idea of laissez-faire, uh, the idea that government should not meddle in the economy. However, sometimes uh, the country sinks into a drastic depression which requires huge action from the U.S. government and calls for government interventions uh, and regulation. Uh, that instance would be the 1929 stock market crash that sent unemployment soaring. Um, and when FDR came into office, uh, the New Deal involved the government in the economy during the Great Depression to create new agencies, to create jobs for Americans, and get people back up on their feet, along with other uh, policies that would help those that could not otherwise financially help themselves. When looking at monetary policy and the Fed, as we otherwise know it, the Federal Reserve System, uh, monetary policy is policy that affects the supply of money in private hands. Okay, um, and that's going to be an important term for you to know. Monetary policy doesn't just affect the supply of money. It also uh, affects the supply of credit in private hands. The Federal Reserve System uh, is responsible for making monetary policy uh, and regulates the lending practices of banks. They also control the reserve requirement that banks must meet. They also cr uh, control interest rates. Uh, which can increase the amount of loans that are given out and taken or decrease those as well. Uh, in this picture, you see Ben Bernanke, who had been chair of the economics department at Princeton and then became chair of the Federal Reserve Board, uh, which is the most important economic policymaking position in the United States. Um, he was also reappointed by President Obama for another four-year term as the Fed chairperson. Once the Fed chairperson is appointed by the president, they are then free from politics and, uh, I'm sorry, partisan politics. Uh, they do not answer to the president. They can receive suggestions, but that is about it. Uh, again, under monetary policy, uh, there is the federal fund rate, uh, federal funds rate, which is what banks are able to charge one another for loans. Banks do loan each other money. Um, the Fed buys and sells government bonds also to determine the amount of money that banks have to lend out. Uh, borrowing is much cheaper when banks have more money and is more expensive when they have less money. Now let's kind of jump tracks and let's look at fiscal policy and um, how, that rates, uh, how that relates to John Maynard Keynes. Okay, so we talked a little bit about this earlier or touched on it. Fiscal policy is the use of the federal budget to influence the economy um, and is pretty much determined by Congress and the president. We looked at the budgetary process, the federal budgetary process, and we know that the president suggests a budget to Congress. Congress then has the ultimate say, and then it is the job of the president to sign off on the budget and approve it. Um, when our tax codes are written in such a way that we increase the taxes on the American people, whichever class, or we decrease those, um, that's fiscal policy. When the government chooses to spend more money in an area or cut spending for something such as the Department of Defense or the military, that's fiscal policy. Uh, John Maynard Keynes, or Keynesian economic theory, states that the government spending and deficits can help the economy deal with its ups and downs. Um, research, research shows us that Democrats agree with Keynes and that the government must uh, be responsible to stimulate greater demand um, by increasing federal jobs programs, by increasing spending, um, and the like. Uh, here you see an example um, in which Keynesian economics is taken to heart, and the federal government um, creates a program in which they will pay cash for clunkers. Um, in essence, you know, turning your car that doesn't work and the government will give you cash immediately. Uh, in regards to fiscal policy, uh, there is supply side economics in which cutting the tax rates, um, especially for the wealthy, uh, will stimulate the supply of goods. Um, Republicans favor this much more um, than Democrats do. 
Supply, supply ciders say that the lowered tax rates stimulate the supply of goods, and as people are more motivated to work longer, they increase their savings and investments and produce more. So there's really, it's really opinionated. Um, which side that you fall on? Do you fall on um, the side of John Maynard Keynes in which the government should spend uh, to stimulate the economy? Or do you fall on um, the side of Republicans in which supply side economics seems more favorable? Uh, here's a lovely cartoon. Uh, the conservative economic fantasy versus the liberal economic fan fantasy. Um, just something to consider. Uh, really, when it comes to voting, when it comes to deciding upon who you think is the best, uh, voters must really understand that it is very hard to control the economy uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one, most policies must be decided, most uh, Fiscal policies must be decided a year or more before their full impact will actually be felt on the economy. And really the effect uh, that they have on the economy is a projection. Um, the budgetary process also is dominated by uncontrollable expenditures that are mandated by law. And we know that uncontrollable expenditures can be uh, social security, agricultural subsidies, uh, those types of things. Uh, a capitalist system also makes it hard to control the economy because the private sector is much larger than the public or the government sector. Um, so there's a lot of fat. I mean, you, you can't control every component of the private sector. Um, also, the federal government spends about 25% of its GDP, but consumers and businesses make the majority of our economic decisions. So you can't control the choices that consumers and businesses make. So the question to ask yourself is, do the choices of consumers and businesses have a greater impact on the economy than public policy does? If so, then can the government actually control the economy? You also have to consider the foreign owned assets that exist, um, how much foreigners actually own of the United States economy. And then there's this idea of protectionism. Uh, shielding our economy from imports. When we import a lot of stuff from other countries, we're being, we can be controlled by other countries economically. Uh, the last point to address would be the World Trade Organization. Um, now, we as the United States, we want to be independent. We don't want to be dependent on foreign products, uh, goods, services, those types of things. However, um, the World Trade Organization is a big factor in this, in which um, they promote free trade among countries. Uh, they want to see that occur. Uh, international trade is seen as creating long-term gains uh, for short-term pain. And the markets that are gained for American businesses in developing countries uh, do cost us jobs, but they can increase production. So um, really, you have to find what side of the fence that you sit on, OK? Um, We'll address uh, arenas of economic policy making in the next episode, um, and we will discuss the trade deficit. We'll discuss um, businesses and public policy. Uh, we'll look at consumer policy and the like. See you next time.